Well, hello everyone. Welcome to DIY Design by CCW. I hope you are having the most fantastic day and thank you so much for tuning in. Well, as you can see, I am about to start another DIY. I found a couple of pieces at my thrift shop. I've got this wonderful jar and this beautiful vase. Uh, this is the type of vase that I love to make over. It's got that wide bottom, cinched in middle, the long trumpet neck, and I see that I really, I have a vision. I think I can really do something with this vase, and I hope you like what I come up with. Now, I am going to continue for a little bit longer at least my color series, and on this vase, I'm going to go back to a color I used it, uh, earlier, and this is Light Amethyst. Now, this paint is made by uh, Folk Art. Uh, the brand is Treasure Gold, and uh, it's just beautiful. And if you'd like to order it, I do have a link for it in my Amazon shop. Now, uh, with the first piece, I've decided to paint the vase first. And what I'm going to do is just paint the bottom of the vase. And uh, I'm going to do something a little different with the top. Um, now, the best thing to do here is to just go uh, in the same direction with your brush, do a light coat. Um, you know, the coverage won't be complete on the first coat because you're going to have to come back and apply uh, at least two, maybe three coats. Um, and if you want it to be a nice even coverage, uh, you don't want to overload uh, the paint on that first coat. So I'll put that aside, let that dry, and then off camera I'm going to come back and apply two additional coats. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my jar. Again, nice even uh, strokes. I'll, in the, For the most part I'll try to go in the same direction. Of course you do have to change direction a little bit uh, to get the neck and, and, and all of that. Um, but again, that's it. And uh, I'll do the same thing with the lid. And then once everything is dry and uh, both or all three coats are applied, I'll come back and we'll move on with this DIY. Right, so now that um, the uh, paint has been applied, again, I did three coats all together to get this nice even finish, and uh, I made sure to let each coat, each coat rather, dry in between, and then I actually let the paint, the last coat dry overnight. There's many times when I've done these uh, types of videos where I kind of rush it, and uh, start doing my de my uh, decorative piece or part before I let the paint dry completely or when it's, you know, just a little tacky. And uh, really, if you want the best results, let that paint dry for a few hours. And in this case, I actually let it dry overnight. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is add some uh, bling wrap and I'm gonna actually work on the top of the vase. Now, if you follow my channel, this is going to be me repeating myself. If you don't follow my channel, this is going to be new to you. Uh, but when I look at a vase, I think of it as a dress. So, or I think about a ball gown, maybe like a fancy ball gown. And uh, I consider the top part, like the blouse and the cinched in part, it's the belt or the neckline, depending on where the where the vase is cinched in. And the bottom is like the skirt, you know. Uh, so in this case, what I'm going to do is start with the top. Now you'll notice that I have the vase turned upside down. And it's just because of the way this vase is shaped. Uh, it was just a little easier for me to do it with the vase upside down. So that I could actually see everything and, and, and get the, the wrap the way I wanted it. And uh, make sure that it was straight. So I'm going to start with some ordinary bling wrap 
and as you can see I have um, I'm just going to kind of work it over and uh, once I apply my glue and just make sure that it's uh, adhered and that it's smooth and flat and uh, the glue I use is or the adhesive I use is E6000 quick hold but of course you can use any adhesive that you like if you try this project um, now I use it because again it, it is a quick hold glue it's a little thinner and it's just easier for me to work with but everybody has their own preference now uh, in order to get to make sure that the wrap is evenly spaced what I usually do is just do one side and then turn my vase and apply the the other piece on the exact opposite side uh, that way I'll know that you know um, my design is going to be pretty even and then when I add another piece I'll go in between the pieces that uh, I've already added and uh, so that's going to be it I'll do that and um, once this part is done I'll come back and we'll move on to the next part of the DIY Guys, so I'm back and uh, we're going to move on to the next part of the DIY. Now, typically what I would do is finish the top part of the vase first. However, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and do the bottom or the skirt of the vase and then come back and finish the top. Now, those of you that follow the channel, you're going to recognize this design uh, that I'm using today because this vase, I'm going to sort of dupe something that I did on the turquoise vase and I'll make sure to link that vase in the eye cards as well as the description box. However, I am going to change the design slightly and add just a little bit different uh, wrap and uh, but the technique in, is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, so here what you see me doing is measuring and cutting and uh, I'll kind of play around with it a little bit because at first I wasn't quite sure which wrap I was going to use and then I determined that I would go ahead and use the uh, what I call regular bling wrap uh, and then the flower uh, bling wrap and uh, do a design with that. Now once that's all done uh, we'll move on to the next part of the DIY and in that part I'll be doing a little bit of Mod Podge. So guys when it's time for that I'll be back and uh, I'll just let you watch me work through this part of the DIY.
All right, guys, so now I'm going to do something that those of you that follow the channel have seen me do before. Uh, if you're new to the channel, um, I'm still going to give you, or whether you're new or you've seen me do it before, I'll still give you a step-by-step -step of what I'm doing. So here is where I'm going to do uh, a treatment that I really like to do, and I'm going to be combining bugle beads with diamond dots, and I'm going to apply uh, Mod Podge to the uh, vase and I'll use the Mod Podge gloss and I'm going to fill in the spaces, <clears throat> excuse me, in between the bling wrap on the top of the vase. So basically what I do is mix the two together and I kind of eyeball it. I mix an equal portion of the bugle beads and an equal, po equal portion of the diamond dots. And uh, there you see that I, I've got them mixed in that little container and I'm going to apply Mod Podge. Now, I like to use the gloss Mod Podge because it dries clear and it gives that beautiful shine. Uh, and I'm going to just, again, try to work it down in between uh, the, the uh, bling wrap. And uh, what you saw me do there really quickly was I got a little bit of Mod Podge on some of my bling wrap and even though it dries clear I wanted to clean a little bit of that off and I was using a wet q-tip to kind of dab at that. So now that I've filled in the space with the Mod Podge now you want to go thick enough to lock in not too thick so that it never dries but thick enough to lock in your seed beads. You can also come back after your seed beads set and uh, apply another layer of Mod Podge to make sure that you don't get any fall. I don't typically get any fall uh, because of the way I pat the seed beads and the diamond dots down into the Mod Podge. Also, what I do is I let each section dry a little bit before I flip it um, to the other side. That way, you know, most of what I put on the vase will stay. If you flip it immediately, you're going to get a lot more fall and you will have to come back and do a second coat, even just to fill in some of the spaces. Now, again, this isn't like glitter. Uh, it does You don't get as much fall as you do with glitter. However, uh, you know, you can get some. So if you're concerned about that, do come back and apply a light coat of Mod Podge after your, your original um, coating of seed beads and diamond dots dries. Now what you see me doing there is again I got a little Mod Podge on my uh, glitter wrap or on my bling wrap rather and I just used uh, a q-tip dipped in water and dry on one side to clean that up. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and apply a little bit of bling wrap to the top. Now, what I'm using here is, uh, this is a fabric trim, and uh, you can get this fabric trim. I buy, I have bought what I have here at um, Joanne Fabrics, but I have since found that it's much cheaper at eFavor Mart. I haven't ordered it from eFavor Mart yet, so I don't know if it's the same quality, but when I do try it, I'll let you know, and I'll make sure to add that to my Amazon shop. Now, uh, once I measure, I'm just going to apply a little glue, and then we're just going to use our finger, my, I'm just going to use my finger cocks and kind of work this uh, fabric trim around the top edge or rim of the vase, just to give it a more professional uh, look, and uh, I like doing that. I like to use um, a little bit of extra. You don't have to do this. You could certainly just leave it as it is. This is something that um, I like to do, just to give it a, take everything up another notch. Now, once I've made sure that this is secure and that it's level, and as you notice, I'm kind of working around the rim, just, 
you know, working my finger cock around the rim just to make sure that it's level. Once I do that, I'm going to move on and start working on the belt of the vase. Now, you're going to see what I do when I'm creating. Many times, I'm not sure what I'm going to do when I first begin the vase or, or whatever it is I'm making. I sort of have an idea, but I'm not 100% sure. So what I did is try a few different fabric trims until I found what I thought spoke to me and uh, is the look that I wanted. Now here I was considering cutting the fabric trim in half and uh, I do believe I end up just going with that wider piece of fabric trim and now this fabric trim I do have in my Amazon shop. Uh, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, it's an iron-on fabric trim. You can get it several places. You can get it. BB Craft sells this. Uh, again, I have a link for it in my Amazon shop, but also you can get it from Joanne Fabrics. I think it's a little more pricey from Joanne Fabrics, but there's several places that you can order it if you like this fabric trim. Now, I'll go ahead now and move on to the next piece. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to decorate uh, the lid and uh, the neck of the jar. And... Um, I kept this pretty simple. I'm using, again, another fabric trim. And if you follow my channel, you know, you've seen me use this before. This is that Additions fabric trim. Again, I'll link this down in my description box for you. Uh, but I love it because it's a beautiful rhinestone uh, fabric trim. And I do believe it's an iron-on. Although I don't know how you'd iron it on with all these beautiful rhinestones in it. And uh, I'll apply this around the neck of my jar and also around uh, my lid. And then um, I believe I'm going to put a, uh, a crystal knob on the top of my lid. And then uh, I'll be back when we move on to the jar, the rest of the jar. So I've set the lid aside and now we're going to move on and finish up the jar. Now I had already decorated the neck of the jar with the fabric trim. Now I'm going to add some of this uh, just regular bling wrap as I call it to the front and the back of the jar. Uh, I decided to cut equal strips and um, you see me applying my glue. Now I'm going to neatly uh, tuck it under the uh, wrap that I have on the neck of the jar and then use my finger cocks to kind of work up and down until I make sure that I've got it laying flat and smooth and I'll do that uh, on both sides of the jar. Now once I've done that, uh, I'm going to probably play around with it a little bit and try to figure out if I want to add any trim to the sides of this bling wrap. And I end up deciding not to do that. I decided to uh, just go ahead and leave the strips uh, the way they are and not add any additional pieces. I do, I believe, here shortly, decide to add a little bit of extra fabric trim around uh, the rim. Um, I decided I needed just another little piece uh, so that when I put the lid on, it'll look more finished. And uh, there you see me going into my scrap bag to, to kind of check to see if I want to add any pieces. Um, and again, I decide not to do that. But I do take a, a scrap piece and add it around the rim. Um, now again, I'm using my scraps here because, you know, these supplies can be you know, if you do a lot of DIYs like I do, supplies can be a little pricey if, you're, if you don't use them wisely. So many times I will use a scrap piece. Now this particular scrap piece was not long enough, so I had to take another little piece and uh, fill that in. And once I did that, no one was the wiser. And, um, you know, and uh, I like the look that I got with that extra piece. So now you're going to see me show you something that you don't typically see in my DIYs. Um, you know, when you DIY, sometimes you do something and uh, you don't like it. 
it doesn't come out the way you want or you, you, you mess up something and you have to fix it. So what you'll see me do here, see me putting that mirror on the side of my jar. I end up gluing these mirrors on both sides of the jar. And then I decided after they dried or almost dried that I didn't like them. I pulled them off and ended up damaging my paint job uh, on both sides of the jar. And there I'm showing you what it looked like when I pulled the paint off or the mirror off. Now I could have fixed this a couple different ways. Um, I could have probably used some fine grit sandpaper, sanded everything down and repainted um, the sides of the jar, but I just decided to, I did repaint, but I didn't sand, and I just decided to cover it up because in the end, the new design that I came up with, I actually liked better. And no one was the wiser that, uh, well, you are now, because I'm showing it to you, that I actually changed my mind and I uh, had to fix my design and I actually like the way it came out with my little change uh, better. So that's what I'm doing and uh, you'll see how I cover this up and, and uh, guys, when you DIY, things happen. Things happen, but it's all about how it comes out in the end. All right guys, so now after this is done, hold on because I'll be back for the big reveal. everyone and this is how everything turned out. I really like these pieces and I hope you do too. There's a close-up of the vase and uh, really pretty I think. Uh, there is the jar and uh, you know what I'm really kind of glad I made the mistake with the jar and uh, because I kind of like how it turned out you know better than what I had initially intended. Uh, but there's a close-up of everything. Now, guys, I really do like these pieces. I like them so much that I actually took the other pieces I had on my dresser uh, away, and I replaced them with these. And uh, I really like how they look. Now, there's a close-up again of the vase. Now, off-camera, what I did is add that brooch that you see. Uh, and I added a different brooch uh, to the front of the vase, or rather the jar. And uh, those brooches come from Walmart. And um, they're inexpensive. Uh, I love the size. They're beautiful, great quality. Uh, I just take the back off and I glue it on. I also added a single row of bling wrap, if you look closely, uh, to edge out my fabric trim there just to give it a little more professional look um, and then I let everything dry overnight to make sure that it was dry before uh, I moved anything around and and that really helps everything to lock in so you don't get the fall and all of that like with the from the seed beads and all of that now there you see some jars that I'm showing that I created in another DIY uh, the pink jars I'll make sure that I pink and silver I'll make sure to link those in the description box and <clears throat> excuse me uh, and in the back you'll see that I did use this color previously for another DIY video and I created those little storage decanters uh, also that vase the smaller vase there, and the larger jar. Now guys, I used all this stuff is now on my dresser. The, 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 uh, all of the, um, the purples, all of the amethyst pieces, and I really love them. I'm using these storage jars, uh, you know, and uh, again, really nice pieces for your restroom, for your, you know, for a powder room, for a dresser, anything that you want to glam up. And um, at some point soon, you're going to be able to order these pieces through my online shop. That is in the works. And uh, But again, if, I hope you like these, and uh, I'll be making more of them. What can I say? And guys, that little string that you see on that jar, that's actually just a glue string. 
and uh, there, there's no defect in that jar. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but uh, anyway, I like them. I hope you do too. Guys, if you're not a member of the channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing. I would love to have you be a member of the family. I also offer memberships, and again, the memberships are going to be improving, and uh, I hope that you'll consider subscribing to the channel or becoming a member. Either way, I'd love to have you. So again, thank you so much for watching. And like I say at the end of every video, I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a wonderful day or night.